Okay, so now you should know that there are certain kinds of nucleuses that are unstable, and then those nucleuses undergo uh, radioactive decay, and uh, that there is a certain amount of time that it takes for that to occur, which we're going to call the half-life. So in one half-life, half of a particular isotope is going to decay into another kind of uh, substance. So now what we want to do is, on this chart, it's going to show you which kinds of radioactive isotopes are used most often. And I have, I have difficulty seeing this particular uh, PowerPoint, so I'm going to look at my computer screen over here. So uh, the first one is going to be carbon-14. And carbon-14 changes into uh, nitrogen-14. Uh, and it has a half-life of 5,730 years. And its effective dating range now is only between 100 years and 40,000 years. So why could we not use carbon-14 in order to date a trilobite? So a trilobite, let's say, is like billions of years old. Why can't we use carbon-14 to date that trilobite? Well, if it has a half-life of only about 6,000 years, well then it's not going to take very many half-lives to go by before there would be virtually no carbon-14 left over. So you could have carbon-14 in a trilobite, but the problem is that it would have decayed so often in a billion years that you would not be able to measure any of the uh, nitrogen in that. Okay, so if we want to do a trilobite that is billions of years old, then we need to pick a different isotope that has a much larger half-life. So for example, uranium-235 uh, decays into lead-207 and it has a half-life of 0.71 billion years. So let's say that our trilobite is a billion years old. Well, then there would be substantial amounts of the original uh, uranium in that trilobite. So yes, you would be able to use uh, that particular isotope in order to measure the age of that trilobite fossil. Uh, in the very last column, it shows you what kinds of minerals would you find uh, those radioactive isotopes in, because that can make a difference be because some of those minerals are going to be found in sedimentary rocks, and other minerals are going to be found in igneous rocks, and other minerals are going to be found in metamorphic rocks. So you can read through that list there, and it shows what the original material is, what does it turn into, what's the half-life of it, what kinds of, of ages can you use it to measure the age of, and then at the very last column shows you what minerals would you tend to find those radioactive substances in. Okay, so what does radioactivity tell us about rocks? So in the case of an igneous rock, it's going to tell you when did it crystallize. So it's not going to tell you the age of the lava or the age of the magma. It's going to tell you at what time did the lava or the magma crystallize into an igneous rock. Uh, in the case of a sedimentary rock, it tells you what is the age of the sediment that's in the sedimentary rock. In the case of a metamorphic rock, it tells you when did the metamorphosism occur. So the age of the metamorphosism in a metamorphic rock. Now there are problems with radioactivity. So one, 
uh, solutions may bring in or carry out the parent or the daughter. So, so by the what I mean by the parent is we talked about that uh, carbon fourteen could change into nitrogen. So the parent would be the carbon fourteen. The daughter would be the nitrogen. So that when you've got water that's circulating through rocks, it could bring in some of the uh, parent material, some of the carbon-14, or it might carry out some of the carbon-14, or it might bring in some of the daughter product, or it might carry out some of the daughter product. So you have to be very careful whenever you're using radioactivity to measure the age of a rock. And then also another problem is temperature because if you heat up a rock, what you, you can have chemical reactions and then some of those radioactive elements might be driven off in water or they might be driven off in, in the form of steam so that the rock might be missing some of those daughter products and then again you might get the wrong estimate for how old that rock is. Alright, so let's take a break and when we come back we're going to talk about the geological time scale.